You are now listening to the Select Gaming Podcast. The gaming industry, the gaming landscape, the way that video games are made nowadays, they've changed. Not to quote the, the Solid Snake here, war has changed, but video games have changed. And I think a big way that video games have changed is that they're operating more in a sense of like how the movie industry operates, how they have PR consultants come in, they have test screenings. Video games are changing in a way where, you know, these big AAA game titles are employing the likes of people who work in narrative structures to come in and to really make games more appealing or make games more appealing for just a bigger demographic so that they can, of course, uh, sell more games and make more money. That's sort of the approach. And this is something that's sort of been going on for a while. Now, a very, uh, I guess you could say, some controversy that's sort of uh, risen in the last little while, in the last couple of years, is that there is a company called Sweet Baby Inc. And Sweet Baby Inc., they are known to be a narrative development and consultation studio. Companies bring them in. Right. Sweet Baby Inc., supposedly helps with the narrative, helps polish story structure up. They bring in characters that they feel will have appeal to a vast majority of gamers, so on and so forth. But a lot of controversy has uh, come out of, um, in the last little while, because a lot of gamers feel that Sweet Baby Inc. is sort of a kiss of death when it comes to video games. They are essentially gamers, or a vast majority of gamers feel that they are ruining games and not actually helping them. And probably the most recent example of this is the Suicide Squad game developed by Rocksteady Games. Right, right. And Rocksteady Games, they worked on the Arkham trilogy, which is a phenomenal Batman video game trilogy. One of the one of the best video game trilogies I think I've ever played. Sweet Baby Inc worked on the Suicide Squad game and a lot of people do not like it. They do not like the choices that were made with characters. They do not like the paragraphs written about characters in the game. They find them to be trite and a little bit condescending. Have you not played Suicide Squad? Uh, I'm only I'm only going to assume that that's right. Yeah, I mean, dude. So people are not happy now. People are coming. They're coming at Sweet Baby Inc. from all different sides, and they're giving their perspective, right? And you know us at the Select Gaming. We like to keep it clean. We like to stay right down the middle. We're not going here. We're not going there. We're going to keep this conversation in the realm of uh, the likes of business and business choices. Sweet Baby Inc., for the last little while, the games that they've worked on, they've either flopped, they've either not sold well, and a lot of people, gamers specifically, are blaming them for this. And there seems to be a pattern that's going on where their consultation seems to not be working. The question I have for you is at what point as a company do you start to take this feedback for essentially the people that you work for, which are the gamers, the audience, and say, you know what, guys, I think we're going to part ways. For a company that was founded in 2018, you don't seem to be doing anything but hurting the reputation of our games. At what point do these companies start to listen to the consumer and say, you know what, we are going to part ways? As far as I'm concerned, I think sometimes we overprivilege what the public has to say about any form of art. I mean, the critiques that are being leveled at Sweet Baby Inc. and the games that they've released. Uh, I'll, I'll just say I had a quick look at some of the games that apparently they had a hand in. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Suicide Squad. I've not played Suicide Squad. I should say they have played Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, the problem with that game has nothing to do with the story. Uh, the problem with that game has to do with the fact that it is about the bazillionth Assassin's Creed. And it is not a particularly good one at that. Amongst other things, like audiences have, for instance, claimed that uh, in 1939, that the problem with The Wizard of Oz was, was that it was just too slow when Judy Garland sang Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And they begged and they begged and they begged and the stu- they said to the studio, you need to make this faster because this Somewhere Over the Rainbow song, you know, it's just not a hit. It's, it's not it. So I think number one, we ought to take 
the uh, the artistic criticisms of a of a particular group with a grain of salt. It's not for people to people are welcome to have their opinions about about how something ought to be made. They should make their own games if if that's the issue, and 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 they're more than welcome to do so. Um, in terms of whether or not a, a corporation should be continually looking to your company like Sweet Baby Inc., I can just talk in general terms because I don't I don't know them from a hole in the wall. But what I what I would say is like it sounds like part of the reason that they exist is to supplement the fact that comp- corporations like Ubisoft no longer have writing teams in-house to do the overwhelming majority of, of the narrative work. And so what they do is they turn to groups like Sweet Baby Inc., who are consultants and, and, and do supplemental writing work, and they top it up. Now, it sounds like you have a niche group uh, that have particular bugbears about the the types of material that Sweet Baby Inc. is foisting onto their games, allegedly, and they've gotten upset, and they've taken to various online forums to, to, to do so. They are upset about particular forms of content that's in there. What, what they ought to be more concerned about is, is that the system that produces a, a sort of paint-by-numbers approach to a lot of these titles emerges from the fact that you don't have people given the, the creative people given the time, the money, and the latitude within corporations to do the types, to create the types of artwork that they're genuinely interested in doing. So is it also is it at all surprising that you you have a consultant group who is probably working on razor thin margins to begin with and is pumping out stuff that is sort of a paint by numbers approach and and and, and shoving in uh, standard responses? I don't particularly think so. Is it affecting their 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 margin Ubisoft's margins on these sales? I mean, potentially, but think of all the other ways, other reasons why these games have failed. I mean, it's one thing to say that this is the kiss of death, but like the Assassin's Creed franchise is a kiss of death. We have a like we're so concerned about Suicide Squad being destroyed by uh, you know these authors, these uh, these writers who again, I don't, I don't know their work, so they may be terrible, and I might agree with them. But what about the fact that there was a handful of Suicide Squad movies that were absolutely abysmal? Might that 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 not have a? It's like I'm surprised that this thing that's already terrible is is and being being poisoned by a whole other other realms of culture. Like to pinpoint this seems seems strange weird and motivated by reasons that I don't necessarily uh, can support. So I think how this whole controversy started is because what ended up happening is that gamers in general started to see patterns of games where they did not like them and they started to notice that little by little Sweet Baby Inc. had their fingers on some of these narratives. And what ended up happening is gamers went on Steam and created a Steam community page called Sweet Baby Inc. Detected. And what it did was it let people know it was a tracker for games that Sweet Baby Inc. was involved in. Now, Sweet Baby Inc. could not take the criticism. So they demanded that this this forum got shut down. And what we have here is an example of the Streisand effect, that when you talk about these things, people start to pay attention more. And then the light on Sweet Baby Inc. was brighter. And people were seeing that, hey, some of these shitty games that are coming out, this company seems to be involved in a lot of them. I haven't played Suicide Squad. I don't care to play that game because I don't really care about Suicide Squad. It sounds like a desperately boring loot shooter. Yeah, so I don't care. But I will say this. The... 2017 or the first God of War release for the PlayStation 4, in my opinion, that that was a masterpiece, okay? I love that game. I think it's great. God of War Ragnarok comes out. I loved it. I still think that that game is, is a masterpiece. It has its problems, but I still think it's a masterpiece. And I will say this. I did feel that at certain points that there were times where the violence in the game, there should ha- it should have been chaos and it wasn't and sweet sweet baby inc has developed a reputation for pushing onto games to having a secondary character be playable in the game where a lot of gamers feel that it slows down a lot of this the narrative structure in a game god of war ragnarok is an example of this where you play as loki kind of pull like a Metal Gear Solid 2 Raiden where you think you're going to play more of Kratos and you end up playing more as his son. And not a lot of people cared about that. 
And I don't know how much of a hand Sweet Baby Ink had in a in a choice like that, but I will say that it did not feel like a choice that would have been made on the first installation of God of War for the PlayStation 4 if Sweet Baby Ink was involved. This is all hearsay because I don't know how much power they have on these narrative structures. But you have people complaining about Spider-Man 2 and how they have to play as Mary Jane in certain missions, and you have to play as other NPCs where people just want to play as Spider-Man. A lot of people are claiming that this is because of Sweet Baby Ink. They're actually hurting the structure of these games now. Right. But to your point, how would they know? We don't because we are not in the room. I do find this pattern quite interesting, though, that the people who are behind this company, and let's not kid ourselves here, okay? The individuals who are running Sweet Baby Inc., they are former Ubisoft employees, and real gamers know that nothing good comes out of Ubisoft these days. And that is the real truth here. A lot of people, they want to turn something into a culture war. They want to turn it into, uh, you know, they want to push, of course, a lot of political things onto something that is so simple as just being PR consultants or being uh, people who were brought in to write narrative structures for the game. It's us. It- it's outsourced. It's outsourced work, right? Exactly. And, and and no no one complained like when King of the Hill got like drawn in like South Korea, right? Like it just because it just because they think that something else has changed. Well, the other thing is too, and and here's the thing: if you want to hate Sweet Baby Ink, go right ahead. That's your freedom to do so. I don't really care. I would say that my only personal thing is that I did feel that there were some choices in God of War Ragnarok. That I did not like. Yeah. And I don't know how much of that was Sweet Baby Ink, but they did work on the game. And with the patterns that we're seeing, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. I don't know. These companies, what you guys have to understand is, as these AAA gaming companies get bigger and bigger, they care less and less about you and about the individual playing the games. What they do is, they bring consultants in. They do it because they're like, well, hey, look, we, we brought... And a third party group to come in and to change this narrative structure and to do these things. If anything happens, it's like, hey, don't don't one hundred percent blame us. You can you can blame them too. The problem is it's the AAA devs that should be held responsible if the game sucks. That's just my opinion. These companies need to take ownership of the art that they are creating. Don't bring in third party people to rejig the narrative structure or to do things in a game where you end up forcing members of an original team to leave the company. The bottom line is you have artistic directors on these games for a reason. And 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 their, resp- their responsibility is to ensure that, um, the, that, that the game upholds a, a, an artistic vision that is that is true to the intentions uh, of, of at least the, the leadership insofar as that is possible. But that's never not going to be constrained in in a whole host of ways. I, my concern here is that the type of outrage that you're getting is, uh, needless to say, I think that the the sort of uh, pandering to having these groups, uh, this you know this this fringe group of people complaining on forums, you know, sweet baby being trying to get uh, that forum shut down was uh, was an it was an imbecilic move of of. Uh, that was that was a mistake on their part. I mean, they should have they should have just walked away. And that was the problem is that I think it's a group of individuals who don't know how to take criticism and they should just focus on what they do and not try and start or get involved in things that doesn't truly concern them. And and additionally, it's it's also a recognition that the overwhelming majority of people who are going to ever play a game, whether it's Suicide Squad or Diablo 4 or any of these titles, they are not trolling Reddits and Steam pages and looking at whether or not some title has this one person who has, uh, has you know, as associated with this one consulting group. The overwhelming majority of people, if they ever reach the end credits of a game, which if you look at any any trophies data on it, is like 5%, if that. They are going to hit X on those credits and skip so fast. So the, the, this overemphasis on what this small group of people are doing, for better or for worse, is missing the mark wholly because the games that are being releasing now and the same way that the films are being released now are part, are part, of, a, a part of a larger system that 
dictates that certain titles are going to come out and certain titles aren't. And and there's there's corporate metrics that go above all of these sort of indicators. And to get upset at a particular group of people because your game is engrossed in a particular way that appeals to you is 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 completely completely narcissistic. Amongst other things, folks, not every game has to be for you. You you do, you don't need to get upset about it. Just 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 let it go. If you don't like it, there's tons of other Spider-Man games to play. Just take take it from me. Go play the PS3 one. It's it's pretty good. Like I said, I blame the AAA developers for hiring third-party individuals who could potentially harm a game. I think the thing that that really bothered me about this whole Sweet Baby Inc. scandal is that, you know, only hours after Akira Toriyama passed away, Sweet Baby Inc. was there to give their sort of uh, disrespectful opinion about Akira Toriyama. And I'm not going to go into it and I'm not going to name names because I'm not doing that. Just go search for it yourself. I think what it shows is, you know, I get a little bit concerned when I see immature people get involved in things that they just frankly should not get involved in. Um, I think it's harming to the image of a company, and I think it's immature. And I think you can say whatever you want about Sweet Baby Inc. or companies like them, but I think what really harms the brand of or the image of a company at the end of the day is a lack of maturity. And I think that that's sort of what we're seeing from uh, an institution like Sweet Baby Inc. is that they don't know how to handle themselves. They are a very small group of individuals who can't take the criticism. And at the end of the day, if you can't take the criticism, then you shouldn't be doing what you're doing. And I don't think I don't think that these uh, these AAA developers are going to continue to hire a company like this if now they have a reputation whether it to be true or not, that they are having the kiss of death with some of these games. The thing that's bothering gamers the most right now is that, you know, for example, with the Wolverine game coming out that Insomniac is uh, developing, Sweet Baby Inc. is on that. And uh, little people, you know, people are concerned that it's it's going to, in some way, potentially be harmed um, from a company like Sweet Baby Inc. But I mean, that's for the future. I, I, think, I think in general, people need to start, people need to consider taking some random person's comments a little less seriously you know i i think so i think so you know it, it's it's i think like i said is it above anything it shows a lack of professionalism and gamers in general are a rather very critical bunch of individuals right and you really got into an industry that if you cannot take the heat and you're going to force crit you know you're going to force controversy upon yourself. The gaming world is probably not for you. I will say this though as a parting thing, and I don't know if this is a good sort of analogy. There's a there's a whole thing, and I don't know, I'm not a Frank Zappa fan. I think he's an interesting guy, prolific in like the whole music scene. But he had a he had a very interesting perspective on the creative industry, whether it's music or film or whatever. And this sort of reminds me of what Sweet Baby Inc. Um, sort of is. So, so the thing that Frank Zappa said is that, you know, back in the day, if you for, if you were a musician, you'd walk into a big corporate office and you'd have the cigar chomping CEO over his desk, and he would look at you and he'd be like, you know, I don't get this, I don't I don't get this music. However, I'm willing to take a chance on this and see if it turns into something where other people like and I can make a lot of money on. What's happening now is that rather than these companies taking risk on things or taking a responsibility for the art that they create, they're employing these people who are like, well, no, 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 we're going to tell you what people like. We're going to tell you what people want. And a lot of that comes from their own perspective of like where their their work experience or what they like or what they believe is good not what is actually good and i think that's the whole correlation of like no one wants to take risks anymore and take ownership and responsibility things are getting too big they're getting too complicated there's too many people involved and when that happens the artistic credibility of something it starts to get diluted by the more people who touch the product, who get their hands on these things. So I blame the AAA devs for letting something like this happen. 
in my personal opinion, because things are getting too big and they need to take ownership of the art that they are creating. And the truth is, is that when you have, when you have people telling these stories from beginning to end, um, w- with uh, with full uh, with full trust and confidence that you know that they can tell a story that might be a little bit more risky. You see, you see, you see much greater success. I think that's. I think that it that is that is almost certainly universally true when it comes to films or music or games. A game like Life is Strange has it has it, it takes all of the risks that a type of game like Sweet Baby Inc. would um, would have no would have no notes or they'd have very few notes um, if they were if they were working on that title. And 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 for me, I I think that the I think what's crucial is is that if you want to express the, you know some of these ideas in games is what you need to have is a team that's in house that that is dedicated to a, to a consolidated vision with a strong artistic lead that is creating a project that has a that has a clear understanding of what it wants to be and what it wants to say you can't really sort of shoehorn these issues in after the fact through sort of corporate consulting and design by committee. And and there's going to be some people who don't like what Sweet Baby Inc. is doing because they're just against things, uh, they're, they're just against anything that, that doesn't fit into their own sort of personal wheelhouse and they'll never play a game like Life is Strange because they have no interest in that in, in that type of world. And, and and honestly, their life is sadder for it. But having, having, but not having that sort of clear vision with inside a game is ultimately why AAA studios are 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 really really screwing this up because they're 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 keeping this these issues at at an arm's length and they're not taking ownership of 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 what an artistic director wants to do they're just trying to uh, avoid controversy and instead they've sort of walked into it Thank you for tuning into the Select Gaming Podcast. Like, share, and subscribe. We create videos for the Select Gaming that are guided by our personal interests, and your support makes that possible.